I think it's safe to say that Daniel is respectful, thoughtful, maybe we could even say kind as he requests, makes his request to the one that was in authority over him. And listen, let's be reminded, he has every reason for the exact opposite. He's taken from his family, from his home, from his country. He's having this new way of life, even a new identity thrust upon him. He has every reason to rebel, and yet he doesn't. There's no hostility. He's not enraged. He's not embittered. What wisdom might we be able to glean from Daniel 1 in life today for us as the people of God? Well, I think this is the first thing, and that is the wisdom of respect for authority. I hope I'm not belaboring the point, but let me say this. In this past year of pandemic, this past year of masks, this past year of closings, this past year of vaccines, this past year of elections, this past year that has involved so much. There has been a lot written by Christians, a lot said by Christians, a lot posted by Christians about authority, local authority, state authority, national authority. And I just have this question this morning, how much of what's been said, of what's been written, and what's been posted could be characterized as respectful? Just asking. How much could we say is respectful? But you say, wait a minute, their policies stink. Don't you know that? Don't you realize they have infringed on my rights? And besides that, these aren't the people I voted for. <laughs> and all that matters, huh? Daniel didn't vote for the Babylonians. There was an authority that was an alien authority that was thrust on him. But all we see from Daniel, and by the way, this is going to hold out through the book. His three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're going to get thrown into the furnace. They say, oh, king. They're not disrespectful. Daniel, when, he, when Darius comes to the, to the uh, mouth of the lion's den and calls into him that next day, oh, king, live forever, Daniel says. This respect holds out through the entire book. And so I ask, have we been respectful in the things that we've said? Have we been respectful in the things that we have posted? There are two reasons you should always respond to authority with respect. The first is this, it's God's will. Now, we didn't have a scripture reading for this morning, but let's turn to Romans 13. We'll use this as our scripture reading this morning. Let's go to Romans 13. Romans 13 and verse 1. We need to hear these words today. Romans 13, verse 1, let every person be subject to governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who's in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes, where the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Paul is not writing these words to people who had the freedom to go every four years and choose their emperor. And yet Paul says, 
this authority you live under is ordained by God and you are to respect it. Peter tells us the same thing. I'm, I'm flipping over now to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, live as people, verse 16, as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. And he goes on to talk about then how you live when those that you live under persecute you. Listen, we, we respond to authority because it is the will of God for us to respond to authority with respect. But number two, we need to keep this in mind from Daniel 1, it may be used by God. Our respect, our attitude toward authority may be used by God, like here with Daniel and his friends. Notice back in Daniel chapter 1, verse 9, and God gave favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And later they're going to stand before the king three years after they finish this, this program that they're in. And the king is so impressed by them, he says, these guys are 10 times better than the wise men I have around me that he actually keeps them in his kingdom, in his administration, and they're going to be used by God to bring influence to the Babylonians. Remember from last week, the plan was take in the best and brightest of the Hebrew children, indoctrinate them to become Babylonians, and eventually send them back to influence everyone else in the Babylonian ways. What does God do? God brings missionaries into the Babylonians. God brings missionaries into the very presence of the king himself. In chapter 4, we're going to see it. This king is going to recognize the sovereignty of God. So God may be pleased to use the respectful attitude of his people to accomplish his work. Listen, is there ever a time to object, to disagree, even to disobey authority? And the answer is yes. We're going to see that in this book. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We can learn your language. We can learn your literature. We can be part of this culture to some extent, but we cannot bow down to you, O King. We cannot bow down and worship you. We can only worship the Lord our God. Civil disobedience, right there it is. Daniel is told you cannot pray to God. And Daniel says, I better pray about that. Three times a day, he makes his prayer to the Lord. And he's thrown in the den of lions. Is there a time to disobey? Absolutely that there is. But even when we are required by God to disobey authority, we do so with respect. Even in facing death, we don't act or speak disrespectfully. I think that's a great bit of wisdom that God's people need to hear and glean and live by in the world today.